Many thanks for attending. Many thanks. Let's hope we can take this campaign forward. One we must win. Thank you. It presents workers in the private sector, the public sector and the voluntary sector. And we have to say we are all in this together. We are all in this together because we're all suffering together, but we're all united together. And today is the day we're standing up and saying, no, enough is enough. Yeah. We're standing up for what we believe in. We're standing up for our communities. We're standing up for justice and equality. And we're standing up above all for pensions justice. Everybody tells you you should contribute and save and that then you will have security in old age. That's just what people have been doing. Pensions are deferred pay, but now they're moving the goalposts and changing it. And all of those things everyone was told to do are not going to work. That's why we have to say you can't blame public sector workers for the global economic crisis. is that yours is a coalition of convenience, a shabby deal. Ours is a true coalition. We are the people of this country and your government is hitting the most vulnerable, the poorest and above all, it's particularly hitting women and children. We think they've redefined the term women and children first. First to cut, first to exploit, first to discriminate against. Two-thirds of the cuts have been funded by taking money away from women. Women's unemployment is, is a record high. One of the things they've been looking at is, how can we get more women into work? I know, let's cut maternity pay. Well, I have to say, it is not decent maternity rights that's keeping women out of jobs. It's the global economic crisis. So on average, these cuts have meant that Every man is losing £4.20 a week, and every woman is losing £8.80. And single parents, who are mostly women, are losing on average a full one month's income. Scrapping the health in pregnancy grant means every pregnant woman loses £190 a week. That's not going to create jobs, that's not going to create better pensions, it's just going to make people poorer and give children a worse start in life. Freezing child benefit and also the horrifying attack on state pension age, which again particularly affects women. And yesterday, they made a bad situation worse. They froze almost all working tax credits and they sent the message to the public sector where two-thirds of the workers are women, that not only have you already lost 400,000 jobs, we are now saying you're going to lose another 300,000 on top of that because we can't balance the books. Because investing in cuts is not going to work. We need to invest in growth. So finally, our question is, do we no longer need schools, hospitals, emergency services, housing, local government support, transport, child, pension or disabled people services. We do need them. That's why public service workers are so important. And here in Bristol, we need home care, which has been so shamefully sold off. Yay. Yay. So, not, not content with attacking older, particularly women's pensions, they're now looking at younger people. 8 million younger men and women currently aged 42 to 51 will have to work till they're 67 and they will lose a year's pension. From the real scandal is the way that inequality has been allowed to develop not just in pay but pensions. And the, the people at the top of corporate Britain have lined themselves with luxury pension schemes at the expense of most workers. And that's a job of work we've got to do. But Stopping public sector workers getting a fair deal is not going to help them. And the other scandal is taxpayers pay through tax benefits on pension contributions, two-thirds of which, £20 billion, goes to top-rate taxpayers. That's the scandal we've also got to address. And we've got to organise private sector workers because this is about them as well. And yes, this is a movement that's going to grow 
we've got to get a settlement to this and the government will be looking at this very closely and we'll also be seeing the polls are shifting against them. The numbers expressed here today are more than they will have expected as well. So thank you, congratulations to everybody because the real message is from the ordinary people who are going to be speaking today and I, let's give them time to speak for themselves. Thank you very much and good luck and solidarity. Fantastic watching you all. And you know what they say, the sun shines on the righteous. Let me start by saying what Cameron and his coalition government is doing is not equal, it's not fair, and it's not right. How can it be equal that whilst ordinary people like you struggle to pay the fuel bills, put food on the table, are public sector workers treated less favourably than high paid MPs whose pensions are not only not being cut, but will get an increase? How can it be fair that after years of saving for retirement, the government can now reduce those benefits by 15%, increase your contributions by 50%, and expect public sector workers to also work longer for the privilege. Or in other words, pay more, get less, work longer. How can it be right that a dinner lady earning £8,000 a year, who retires at 65, loses £400 a year in pension under these government proposals. Whilst the banks, who cause the economic crisis, in part, pay nothing. And Cameron, Osborne and Clegg have no idea and no sympathy for what ordinary people are suffering and are likely to suffer in the future. of the public support today's strike, the biggest in decades. And thanks to everybody here and on strike today, I thank you on behalf of the GMB for supporting this action. I also hope, I also hope that when Cameron, Osborne and Clegg see this support, they start listening and willing seriously to negotiate on pensions. Pensions, decent pensions for all of us. The real scandal is the way that inequality has been allowed to develop, not just in pay, but pensions. And the, the people at the top of corporate Britain have lined themselves with luxury pension schemes at the expense of most workers. And that's a job of work we've got to do. But stopping public sector workers getting a fair deal is not going to help them. And the other scandal is taxpayers pay through tax benefits on pension contributions, two-thirds of which, £20 billion, goes to top-rate taxpayers. That's the scandal we've also got to address. And we've got to organise private sector workers because this is about them as well. And yes, this is a movement that's going to grow. We've got to get a settlement to this and the government will be looking at this very closely. And we'll also be seeing the polls are shifting against them. The numbers expressed here today are more than they will have expected as well. So thank you, congratulations to everybody because the real message is from the ordinary people who are going to be speaking today and I, let's give them time to speak for themselves. Thank you very much and good luck and solidarity. ECS and uh, John's promised me he's written a speech that lasts four minutes. Thank time. Here today, in Bristol, and in every town and city throughout the country, millions of workers are sending a clear message to the coalition government. We will not allow you to steal our hard-earned pensions rights. We will also oppose your cuts programme as an attempt to make us pay for the mess made by your friends in the banking industry. And we will defend not just our terms and conditions, but our communities too. Because these cuts are unnecessary. There is an alternative based in tax justice, job creation and investment. And the austerity programme 
of which the attack on pensions is a part, is a disaster for the vast amount of people in this country. It means that unemployment is up to 2.6 million. It means youth unemployment is up to 1 million. It means pay freezes for us, where the richest 1% stuff their bank accounts with obscene, unearned wealth. It's about the biggest transfer of wealth and power in history through a privatisation programme that means the end of free education and free health. And we saw what happened in Greece when Papandreou dared to suggest that the people should be consulted on the cuts programme there. And the cuts and privatisation programme in this country too is also a fundamental attack on democracy. No one voted for these cuts and only the multi-millionaires will benefit from them. This government has no mandate for these cuts and are being carried out on behalf of a tiny elite at the expense of the overwhelming majority. And who is it that's carrying out these attacks? What a shower! David Cameron, an obscenely rich ex-advertising executive with a personal fortune of £68 million. There is Fra and Francis Maud. This is the man who was caught fiddling his expenses to claim for one of his four homes. And then there's the tax-dodging Chancellor, George Osborne. Then there's Nick Clegg, another wealthy con man and professional liar. And finally, and finally, there's the biggest strip in British politics, Danny Alexander. Many of these people are simply unfit to hold public office. They have no moral authority. They're devoid of any decency or loyalty, other than to the bankers and their big business backers who bankroll them and who will see them all right when they are kicked out of the office. There can be, there can be no excuse for this attack on pensions. Public sector pensions are affordable, they're sustainable and they're actually falling in cost. Both they're only low pay. It, pensions are only deferred wages, and low pay means low pensions. The average civil service uh, pension after full service is only £80 a week. Hardly gold-plated, hardly a fortune. The truth is this. These people want us to endure a lifetime of low pay, followed by an impoverished old age. They are beneath contempt. They have sought to divide public and private sector workers. But the reality is, and you won't see this in the pages of the Daily Mail, is that public sector pensions are actually comparable in cost to public, to private, to public sector pensions. The real truth is that millions of public sector workers have had their pensions stolen from them. And while the government complain, it, it, it claims to support the private sector, the reality is public spending cuts are cutting just as many, if not more, jobs in the private sector. For every job that goes in the public sector, at least one, and probably two, will go in the private sector. But we must speak out loud and clear for public services. Let's be clear, public sector sending is not a debt, it is an investment in people, it is an investment in, in communities, and it is an investment in services. And when when, when rich Tory ministers talk about fairness between public and private sector pensions, what they really mean is a race to the bottom. They want to impose on us the worst pensions they possibly can. And that is why our slogan is fair pensions for all. Yes, we are fighting to defend our own terms and conditions, but we're also fighting for decent state pensions. It is an obscenity that the state pension is £102 a week while well, the poverty level is £170 a week. And that is why we must stand together to defeat this attack. The real division in society is not between public sector and private sector workers. The real division is between the haves and the haves not. The real division is, between, is not between, is between, public, is between working people, the overwhelming majority, and the tiny elite of spivs and gangsters who have never done an honest day's work in their life. These people, these people make their fortunes by gambling in the stock exchange and privatising our services. 
That is not socially, socially useful work. It is legalised theft. And the real division is between those who believe society should be run for the people and those who believe that society should be run for profit. But the truth, the truth is this, that they couldn't get away with it if it were not for the fact that the Labour Party is committed to protecting corporate interests of the billionaires rather than representing working people. Here, here. Ed, Ed, Miliband, Ed Miliband said he cannot support this strike. Well, we have a message for Ed Miliband. You're a disgrace. We will never, we will never, ever, we will never ever forgive your craven toading to the bankers and to the Tory press. I will never forgive your treachery.